This is Melvin Jackson Jr. I'm honored to have this exclusive one-on-one -on -one sit down with Brittany K. Jackson for the LA Sentinel. Yeah, we promoting a new edition movie coming on BET January 24th, 25th, and 26th. And I'm playing the one and only legendary Curtis Blow. Shameless plug, self-promotion. All right, stay tuned. Let's go. So we are here at the Los Angeles Sentinel with the amazing writer, actor, producer, director, Melvin Jackson Jr. There you go, gotta get the brand. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing great, how are you doing? Good, uh, it's actually a pleasure to be interviewing you for the second time. Yes, thank yeah. you, thank you. The first one was great. Yeah. This one's going, you know, we're gonna get deep into some things. You exactly, know? exactly. So I wanna jump right into it and just ask you about how you got started in your career um, in the entertainment industry? Well, I started off as a manager, managing artists, and um, did that for a few years. And then I, I was also was doing some acting, um, most of modeling. And then the agency I was with had me audition for a PSA. I booked a job, my first acting job. I didn't have any acting experience. And once I did that, I was like, this is what I want to do. And um, went from there, started really taking it serious. Watched movies and just wasn't, wasn't to watch for entertainment, but to learn. And people like Denzel and Samuel Jackson and um, Eddie Murphy on the com comedy side and everything, and just just became in love with acting. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand that you're originally from Washington D.C. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what made you decide to move to Los Angeles? Um, because uh, I think after I did the Wire, I think it was just time to kind of get my feet wet in L.A. I always wanted to come to L.A. and um, wanted to see if I could, you know, make a name out here for myself and pursue and continue to pursue my career. Yeah. Um, so I took the, took the leap of faith and went out here and gave myself four, four weeks, a month, to, to pretty much, you know, land something or go home. Yeah. And, um, so for those of you who are may not be familiar with or don't recall Melvin's role on The Wire, can you speed us up on that? Sure. Um, I played Bernard on uh, third season of The Wire. Uh, he was a part of the Avon Barksdale crew, and he got the cell phones right around the cra town with a crazy girl, um, <laughs> and ended up getting everyone locked up. So I want to switch gears a little bit. I recently saw on Facebook, on a Facebook Live post that you recently did, that you are not only an entrepreneur, not only in the entertainment industry, but you're still working a nine to five. Yes, That's many of us. Right. That is many of us. So can you just speak to that and why you felt it important to speak about that? Well, God put it on my heart to, to speak about it because I think in this business, sometimes we look at the outside and we'll see people on TV, we'll see them in films and we're like, oh, they're making money, they're doing this and doing that, where it's like, in actuality, they may not be making as much. They may be making okay, but it's not enough to go and quit your job. So I say that, you know, having a job is, is your foundation that when you are able to quit your job then at the right time, then you do it. But until then, um, I feel like it's, it's important to have that foundation when you have a family to support. And so I feel like it's, it's a, I have a responsibility to still maintain working a job because until I'm at a point to where I don't have to work it, then it's like, okay, I can walk away from it. But I, you, can't, you can't just, you know, I took a leap of faith before and it's like it almost, I almost got burned from it. But it's like in these times, you just have to really, you know, think about a consistent check. Mm -hmm or a check every now and then that you know may come or may not come and it's like I like the consistent check a little bit better. Yeah. And, and tell us about like the wisdom or discernment um, needed to really make the decision at the right time and not the wrong time and really uh, what it means to step out on faith. I mean I say for me is that it's, it's one of those things is um, when you walk away from a job you gotta have your, your plan you know in a sense of making sure that you're able to pay your bills for several months or even I want for me I want to be debt free so mm -hmm. if I'm walking away from a job I'm like okay that means whatever check I'm getting is going to take care of my debt it's going to allow me to have money in the bank so that with roles are not coming I'm still okay mm -hmm. you just have to set yourself up for success not for failure mm -hmm. and you just have to continue to pray about it and I think that when you hear from God and he leads you in that direction you'll know when it's time right. but don't just jump on this I'm going to leave my job yeah. because I don't book this TV show and now the TV show is canceled and you're back to square one again So I want to know, have you experienced any adversity uh, in the entertainment industry? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's important for you to because um, if everything is easy, then you really want to appreciate it. So I've been in a position where I had to kind of work even harder to to get opportunities and not just sit around and wait. And um, there's been opportunities that I felt like, you know, were mine. But then I wasn't given it. So, I, but now I feel like, well, in those moments, if it was mine, then it would have been given to me. 
and um, it hasn't been so hard where it's just like, oh, it's unbearable. It's just been a situation where you're sitting and waiting. You're like, man, I'm not booking anything. What do I do? Then you start like, I need to create. That that's the thing. I never want to just sit idle and and not and wait for the phone to ring. I want to be the one that's making a phone call, saying, hey, let's get to work. And so that's why how I I uh, you know combat that the adversity of like, okay, this is in my way. All right, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna set up the shop and I'm gonna do it my way. Now, you get a lot of comparisons to Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Have you ever gone out for a role as Eddie Murphy yeah, or would you consider I have, actually. I went out for the role for the uh, Whitney Houston movie for Lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I was, it, was a, it was an honor to be able to go in and audition for him. Um, I met him one time and, um, yeah, it's just people call me young Eddie Murphy and I, that's an honor. I definitely would love to play him in a biopic. and. Um, you know, definitely want to do Beverly Hills Cops and everything. Yes, just, yes. Speak it into the yes, atmosphere. Yes. I love that. So, you know, I'm definitely <laughs> a fan of him. He's, you know, reason I was, you know, was got into comedy. And, and I feel like, you know, he's made me a better comedic actor by just watching some of his, his things that he does. He's a genius. So uh, he's, he's an honor to one day be able to work with him. You're not just an actor, you also write, direct, and produce. Right. So tell us about how that ties in um, and you know what projects you're currently working on. I feel like it was important to write. Like I never saw myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first movie I wrote was my life story, of kind of semi-life story about me being raising a kid at 17 in high school and just how that looks, you know, being in high school and all these things. And um, it just turned into something else to where it's like I had stories in my head that I wanted to get out because it started for me writing poetry. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's important to create because I don't want to just be a player in the game. I want to be an owner. Mm -hmm. And I always say- Did y'all hear that? Can you, say, can you say that again? I don't just want to be a player in the game. I want to be an owner. So I, I tell people this year, I said, it has to have a million dollar mentality. Mm -hmm. We can all, no longer have that dollar store mentality and just sitting by and, and waiting for things to happen. We got to go and make things happen. If you want to be a millionaire, you got to hang around millionaires. You want to be um, knowledgeable, hang around all people that have so much knowledge that it's you know they can give you some more yeah, yeah. Um, but I just think that you have to surround yourself around great people like-minded people mm -hmm. to be able to build yourself up so I want to know what advice do you have for artists actors entertainers that are looking to make their start in the uh, industry I always tell people do your research I mean now that you have so many ways to find out about the industry and what you the things that you want to do so I'd say look research it so that you know for yourself that no one can tell you any differently. You can you know do the research, but I also understand like um, put in the work. I think that a lot of times people want it easy. They see you on TV and like oh, I want to be instant fame. There's no such thing as instant fame. Mm -hmm. Those instant famous people will eventually fade away yeah. because you have to have a good foundation. Mm -hmm. So I say that make sure that this business is what you want to be in because it's a tough business, but also have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Also know that there this is just not the focal point of your life like you don't have to be in front of the camera you don't have, you can be behind the camera like there's there's so much need for other things outside of entertainment doctors lawyers but i just say do the research prepare yourself for the the no's before you get the yeses yeah. and just do, you know just be ready just just go on there every day and just work harder and harder until you get to your destination playing Curtis Blow in the upcoming new edition series or the new edition story. Right. Tell us about how you landed that role and what it's like, just the whole process. Well, I first have to tell the backstory. I think I told you this before. Um, I was transitioning um, more so behind the scenes and, and being a producer and I wasn't going to do acting as much. Um, um, and But I was like, God, if this is what you want me to do, let me know. I, I'm okay. You know my love for acting. But I was willing to feel like if producing was going to help me be able to help more people, then great. I was even willing to be a PA and start from the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this audition came about the same day audition. And I was like, wow, I'm looking at like, no audition. Curtis Blow. <laughs> right now, oh, wow, this is really happening. And um, I was overwhelmed, like, wow, this is crazy. Going to audition, and uh, we, me and that cast director joke. And I, I go into doing um, uh, my my. The, the lines and everything they tell me she told me what you know what to do made the correction mm -hmm. did it again she's like cool great mm -hmm. and i was just like i left i was like i really want this role like wow. i really i really want this role so i was like eager trying to make sure look at my emails make sure <laughs> um you know everything was coming through and then next thing i know uh, two days later 
I get a, a email from my agent saying you've been pinned, which means like you get pinned, that means that you you, got consi pinned. you, you considered being considered. And I, they said I was one of the top choices of the network, and I was like, wow, that's huge. Wow. And then two days later, I got the call from my agent saying you booked it. Um, they just added so much to 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 give me so many lines. They were throwing me lines left and right. They added to the story, yeah. and I'm just thankful for the opportunity because it could have just been a little. Two, one, one or two liner, but it, they made it so much more and then they added me in another scene. So I just tell actors, be ready. Well, the project I'm currently working on right now is The Price of Fame. It's a film that I wrote. Um, it's a Christian-based film about the industry. Sometimes um, your, your faith is compromised by the decisions you make to pursue this business, um, chasing fame and fortune. Um, I think that sometimes we, we lose focus on what God's plan for us instead of um, and we focus on what our plan is for ourselves, and I just think this movie is going to open uh, a lot of people's eyes, and it's going to people going to definitely relate to it because they've gone through these things and whether they experienced it or heard about it, um, just the things that go in this industry and that you can still keep your faith um, and still be successful in this business as well. And um, hopefully, uh, we'll be starting soon the DPG for Life movie, and where I'm playing corrupt. Hey. So definitely um, waiting for the opportunity. Definitely want to um, you know do that justice, and you know people love. Love Dog Pound and people are crazy in LA about about those guys, uh, <laughs> corrupt and dads. So I definitely want to make sure I do a great job and um, just tell a great story. Well, we're looking forward to it, and this looks like it's gonna be an amazing year yes. for you. So we're looking forward to being on the opposite end watching you, you. do so. Yes, thank you so much.